What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the EA Sports College Football 25 Akron Zips Dynasty. That is right, we are back. Week one in the Akron Zips Dynasty, yeah, went about as expected. Getting blown out by the Ohio State Buckeyes 37 to 7. But we have a chance to redeem ourselves today versus Rutgers. Played a Big Ten school last week, and we play another Big Ten school this week. But hopefully this one is a little bit easier. Now, one thing I learned last week, which I already knew, we lack talent. And we lack talent in a big, big way. So we are going to continue our recruiting today a little bit before we dive into this game. And without talent, you know, the Akron Zips, they're not good anyways. Don't see us getting too much better unless we can bring in some semi big name prospects. So we take a look here. First and foremost, quarterback Akeem Bullocks. He is the 43rd ranked quarterback at his position. So far, us and Tennessee have both offered him a scholarship. Tennessee is pretty, pretty far in the race. And I believe this is the week that we can. Yeah, this is the week that we can start scheduling visits now. I think that even though quarterback may not be the biggest need on this roster as of right now, we got Ben Finley. He's, you know, he's Ben Finley. He's decent, but this could be a potential game changer. And I'm going to go ahead and schedule, schedule a visit right now. So we could schedule a visit for him to come out. And uh, I don't know if I really want him to see us play. I mean, that could, that could be a deal breaker right there, but uh, we got to FCS East coming up here in week three. And we could go ahead and schedule him a visit. Now, we don't really know too much about what his uh, motivating factors are. We know that playing style is one of them. So we're definitely going to look at something that will target playing style, which it looks like uh, a 10 practice would be the best thing to do. So we're going to schedule quarterback Akeem, Bo Akeem Bullocks from Savannah, Georgia to come out week three and watch us watch us or, you know, watch our team do a practice. Now, that did bring us down to 85 out of 400 hours. So we really got to be careful. I did remove some hours from some players that, you know, just really didn't make too much sense. We also have the ability to uh, soft and hard sell now, but I don't think he'll he'll commit to Tennessee next week. I sure hope not. And we'll just kind of see what happens next week and how much in the race for Akeem Bullocks we really, truly are. Looking at receivers here, we are first in the race for three-star recruit Brian Redman from Cincinnati, Ohio boys. So coming to the Zips makes a whole lot of sense and we are very very far ahead of northwestern right now and it's only us in northwestern that have even offered him a scholarship kentucky and ohio state haven't done that yet but what intrigues me the most for the wide receivers is this guy right here kevin teague hidden gem it says right four-star recruit out of hollywood florida and we are pretty much tight in the race with the university of miami we've scouted him all the way 100 percent. he looks like a, a pretty good prospect right i mean 77 catching, 83 release, 75 catch in traffic, 78 short route, 92 speed. I really, really like. So it may make sense to schedule a visit for uh, Mr. Teague here as well. And maybe even oh, we are already sending the house at him, so we can't do any more there. But we could schedule a visit for him to come out week six. I mean, he could he could come out week three. We already got Akeem Bullocks coming out week three. So we'll schedule him a visit to come out week six. He's looking for playing style and proximity to home. So if we look and see what the different motivating things are, a family visit we could do, but he's much more motivated by playing style. So I think we let Kevin Teague come and attend Akron Zips practice as well. This guy right here, Tyreek Benedict, four-star recruit. He's the third best tight end in the class. And we are very, very far ahead of all the other schools, Ohio State, is right behind us, but not really. And we're the only team to offer him a scholarship. So right now, I'm just going to be kind of cool chilling. He's got some mental abilities too, team player and road dog. If I see Ohio State start to creep up there, you know, and do a little bit more, then maybe I'll swoop in, add some more stuff, maybe schedule a visit once he narrows down his top three, whatever the case may be. And then tackles, we are first for a lot of these guys. So I was thinking that, you know, we'd have to settle for a lot of one and two star recruits. That may actually not be the case. Now, it's still early, of course, but we got Tavita Skura here. He's a four-star recruit. We're very far in the lead for him. We got Nick Najvar. He's a three-star recruit. We're pretty uh, decently, you know, ahead in, in, in that one. And then Bobby Babineau, they say he's a bust, but he's a four-star guy. And I don't care. They can say he's a bust all they want. He's not going to be a bust for us. And really, I mean, looking at his, his scouting, 85 block power, 84 block finesse. 
84 pass block, 79 strength. He doesn't look that good. And uh, right now, we're doing everything besides sending the house. So, you know, we'll cool chill on Bobby Babineau, kind of watch how that race goes and maybe, you know, adjust accordingly. I am very curious about Malachi Garba here. Awesome name, by the way. UNC scouting him pretty heavily, but we've offered him a scholarship. They have, and so has Georgia Tech. And we scouted him a little bit, not all the way, but I don't think it's necessary to really scout a lot of these players, you know, too much further. And I didn't think we would really have a chance at old Malachi here, but it looks like if we pump a little bit more in there, you know, and he narrows down his top three, maybe schedule a visit. I think that we actually have a fair shot at getting him. So we will, at least for now, we'll contact his friends and family. We'll search him on social media. That should get us up a little bit, you know, further, closer to UNC there and then kind of go from there next week and see what we're looking at. We got 15, uh, 15 hours left. We got Wayne Bullet here. We're kind of in the race for him at a linebacker uh, free safety. We have Deontay Isaac. We are very far ahead of the only team that's offered him a scholarship so far as well. And I mean, we're going to use our points for sure. Brian Dwyer, he looks very good. Three star recruit where Again, the only team to offer him a scholarship also. Daniel Keenan, we need a center pretty bad. So maybe we're already uh, contacting his friends and family. So he might be cool for now. We're going to go ahead and offer a scholarship to Wayne Bullet here. And middle linebacker, position of need. And let's start scouting him a little bit. Right now, we don't know too much. 77 tackle. That takes away all of our hours. But so far, I'm feeling pretty good about our recruiting. We're not really have, look, looking like we might not have to settle for a lot of one, one, two stars. Now, we could have to. Again, it's still very early. Some of these guys could commit in the weeks to come. But at least initially, you know, getting off the ground running, I like the way that our recruiting and, and some of the races that we're in for some of these players is panning out so far. If you look at our opponents today, the 81 overall Rutgers Scarlet Knights in the Big Ten. We got Ethan Kalik Manis here, quarterback under helm, the former Minnesota Golden Gopher transfer, and sophomore out was uh, Alan Shepard, Ajani, Ajani Shepard, okay. Backing him up, halfbacks, we got Kyle Monogani, I guess. I'm not really familiar with him, but he's good. 90 overall player, Samuel, Samuel Brown, the fifth is also there, Jashawn Benjamin. So maybe Rutgers won't be as easy as I thought they would be. Wide receiver, they got Christian Dremel. He's good, got some mental abilities. Also a physical ability cutter as well. Uh, Dimir Miller, pretty good uh, wide receiver. Nassim Brantley and Chris Long. Yeah, Rutgers, uh, the good old St uh, Scarlet Knights, kind of looking stacked. Victor Kanopka is the tight end to go along with Dom Tuck and Kenny Fletcher. So they got some weapons for sure. Their offensive line, Holland Pierce, left tackle, three physical abilities over there. He looks pretty good himself. Let go, uh, left guard, the senior, Brian Felter, he's got two physical abilities. Offensive line looks pretty good. The center here, Gus Zilnikus, he's uh, 81 overall, no abilities, but he's pretty good. Looks pretty good anyways. Reggie Sutton is the right guard. And then uh, Tyler Needham is the right tackle. Defensively, this is one to watch here. Aaron Lewis, the left end. Three physical abilities, three mental abilities. Our, our offensive line is trash. So he's going to be looking to wreak some havoc in the backfield, I'm sure. Same with Wesley Bailey. So they're good on both ends of the defensive line. And then pretty stacked in the middle as well with Malcolm Ray and Keontae Hamilton. So our offensive line, they're going to need to... I don't know, man. Coach Dudley Saxton may need to smuggle some illegal substances into that locker room to get these guys fired up because this defense looks pretty, pretty good. I mean, really the whole team. So, you know, Ohio State was a challenge last week. I am assuming that it's probably going to be a challenge this week. Don't want to advance week. No, that would be terrible. But uh, it's probably going to be a challenge with Rutgers to feel a little bit more confident about this one. But as you see, we're 74 rated overall, and they are 81 rated overall. But without further ado, guys, hope you guys are excited for this matchup and for this Akron Zips Dynasty series. If you are, please smash the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. At 1,000 subscribers, I will be doing an NFL jersey giveaway. So please help me get there. I am so, so close. And without further ado, let's get on down to Rutgers, New Jersey, and get ready for the game. Welcome to the birthplace of college football. The State University of New Jersey, the campus of Rutgers in Piscataway, and we are ready for what ought to be a tremendous game today. 
What an exciting matchup we have in store for you this afternoon, built around the pageantry, tradition, and everything that makes college football great. As we'll see a squad from the MAC, the Akron Sifts, taking on a team from the Big Ten, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Time to get this game started. And the Zips will get the ball first. Last week, we were only able to put up a singular solo touchdown. Going to have to do much, much better as we get a look at uh, Coach Dudley Saxon there. And there is our quarterback, Ben Finley. I don't think he played terrible, but we actually, for, you know, for a moment there in that game against Ohio State, we came out with some intensity. It was looking like we may actually do pretty good. And then, you know, it was all downhill from there. So this one going to have to be different. And we are just going to go underneath right away to Faison Wilson. Thought that he may have had a lane there to pick up some extra yardage. Ultimately, he was only able to pick up three. And also want to make sure, I think we got to get our tight end Max Wisner involved here. He is a weapon. Might also have a uh, golden here on the outside. We're going to go to Wilson. Wilson catches it, trying to hurdle people, doing his best Peyton Hillis impersonation, and he's able to move the chains. Okay, not a bad start here. Not a bad start at all for the Zips. Definitely want to get our running game going. And, uh, you know, Marquez Williams and Charles Kellum, they're going to be key today and just no room to run up the middle as we are met and stopped there by Moses Walker, the middle linebacker. It's uh, probably on second and nine. Maybe go a little screen action to Kellum. Didn't really get that established necessarily the way I wanted to. Let's actually flip it, too. I don't like the way that that left side is looking there. feel a little bit better about the long side of the field so hopefully we can get this and I mean the pass is actually caught and Kellum has some room to run gonna actually pirouette and pick up a first down ultimately stopped there by Saquon Loyal the safety but I will certainly certainly take a nice first down on that one we are here after the nine yard pickup from Kellum and we got the ball all the way into Rutgers territory albeit uh, only by a few yards this drive is starting out pretty good let's just go to our running back so Kellum involved early here in the passing game and hey whatever it takes if that's what it takes I am here for it right now all I care about is getting a win do not want to start the season out 0-2 if we can help it so let's just go ahead and give it to our other running back Marquez Williams had a lane there but it got clogged up pretty quick that's gonna make it third and one trust the running game here trust Charles Kellum to pick up one hard they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine you fought yard he cuts back and he's not able to get it and you know what got to be aggressive here i'm gonna at least come out goal line and take a look at the qb sneak see what uh, type of coverage i mean there's a big hole there in the middle i'm confident that ben finley can pick this up so just charge ahead forward finley does get the first down yeah we cannot be we cannot be piddle dicking around in this one here guys we have got to Keep our foot on the gas and got to stay aggressive. Cannot be conservative. And that was a nice, nice job of Finley picking it up. So fresh set of downs here. Going to come out shotgun with the mesh concept working. And we'll just give it to Alex Adams, our wide receiver. He's going. He's still going. Does he have the speed? Alex Adams going to get into the end zone. What a start from the Akron Zips. Alex Adams, arguably our best player. It's between probably him and Darian Lewis, the corner. But Alex Adams caught that thing, and he did the rest all by his lonesome. Rutgers fans cannot believe it. Uh, they're in shock, looking like they've seen a ghost out there. And Alex Adams silences this crowd. On-target pass from Ben Finley. Lots of yards after the catch. Akron U with the first score of the ball game. Got to make sure I don't miss these kicks, though. I'm still not 100% confident with them. That one should be good. When I kick these extra points, man, I literally just... Tap the X button for a split second, and then I let go of it because I'm not trying to be out here on camera missing extra points. I'm already as bad as it is in this game. Don't want to embarrass myself any further. But anyway, it's a good opening drive here. Now, our defense, that's the big question mark. I mean, maybe a kick return touchdown for Rutgers. No, thank God. But Dudley Saxton, our defensive coordinator, going to have to get Kyle Monogani and Aaron, or Aaron Lewis's defense, but... Ethan Kalik Manis and these guys on Rutgers is going to have to do our best to shut them down. And I think that we come out here and just blitz them right out of the gate. May also put uh, 
somebody in a coverage zone here, and there's a nice, nice play by our D to limit Monogonai to only, actually, a loss of one. I need some man coverage here on the outside, because I do not like the fact that number three is so open, and okay, well, it went to number three anyways, but we were there to meet him, and I have been trying to, uh, you know, user change adjustments, blitzes, and man coverage, and stuff like that, and I feel like, I think we're going to just send the house here. Confident this is probably going to be a... Oh, yeah, this is going to be a running play for sure. Has to be, right? And it is. And it's... Oh, it's a quarterback keeper. Oh, got me. Good call there by Rutgers. Wow. It's the last thing I would have expected. We were there to drill him, but not before the damage was already done. Okay. Well, that was a pretty good play there by Rutgers. And let's just not allow that to happen again. Please. A pick or something. Fumble. Some turnovers. That would do our defense justice, and we didn't really see too much of that, I think. No, we didn't have any picks, I don't believe, last week or anything like that. And uh, really going to need need to do something because just, you know, allowing the other teams to march up and down field, we don't have the offensive weapons to really keep up with that. All right, guys, this is it right here. Press coverage here on the receivers. They got a man in motion. Let's see where they're going to go. It's not a keeper. What the fuck is this? I don't know. For this time, it's wide open. On the outside, there is the tight end, Victor Kanapka. And that's where, you know, in college football, when it's third and third and short, third and one, stuff like that, really, the whole playbook is open. I mean, it's so much different, really, than the NFL. I need some man coverage here on X. I don't like that at all. You can see there I'm trying to uh, kind of mess around with the user adjustments, but it's going to be Monogonai, the running back, matching us score for score. That was a pretty easy drive for the Scarlet Knights. Very little resistance offered on our end. And if we have to turn this into a shootout, not really feeling too confident in the zips and our ability to do that. Drive number two here for Ben Finley. Let's see what it will yield. We're going to send Faison Wilson in motion and maybe look for our tight end here, Max Wisner. He could be the read on this one. Got to snap this ball, though, Finley. And I actually think it might be Wilson. Nope. Couldn't lob it over the head there as that was good defense there by Moses Walker. Got to get better at that touch pass. That one looked like it actually could have been open. Come out shotgun here with trips to the left and just see who wants to get open. We're going to get sacked. Tried to get it out there to Marquez Williams, but we are going to get sacked. We're going to let this thing tick down to the end of the first, but not a position that you want an already struggling, already less than stellar roster to be in. That much is for sure. And we did pretty good in the passing game in that first quarter, but literally no rushing game at all. Negative three yards. Got to find a way to turn that around. I mean, maybe we get to Alex Adams on this little Texas route, or if not, maybe just look at... Oh, we're just going to go to the tight end here, Max Wisner. Yeah, I mean, I if I had a little bit more time, I probably would have looked to get Alex Adams involved. But that's the thing. Our offensive line is trash. We don't really have too much to work with. And we're not giving uh, good old Ben Finley that much time in the pocket to go through his progressions. That punt's not going to be as good as I would would have liked it to be. Maybe we'll get a good bounce. Actually, a decent bounce. Rucker's going to start this from the 25. Go press coverage with the blitz, but I need to man up on this running back here because he, you see that, uh, oh God, it's the QB option. Okay, Kalika Manis, we're going to have to be aware that he can do that. Maybe we'll go ahead and change the option defense here to conservative because that's the second time. Yeah, got to put the option defense on conservative because that's the second time that Kaliak Manis has been able to carve us up with his legs. And we already got a running back who can do that. So don't want to have to worry about a quarterback that can do that as well. And oh my God, missed tackle. Come on, you got to be kidding me. We just don't have the guys, man. We just don't have the guys. That could be the common theme here for the rest of the day. All right, ball is on the 12. Come on, Zip. Somebody just step up and make a play, please. I don't even care who it is. Nope, it's going to be Kyle Monogonai for his second rushing touchdown of the game. And we got to hurry up and respond and respond quick or else this one could get out of hand just like the last Big Ten game we played last week. My head is underwater. Would love to get the running game going here with Kellum, but let's go actually... Do I just audible and streak Wilson? That's the question. I think I do. Got to make sure I can do this with enough time before the play clock winds down. Come on, Finley. Go through your reads, man. Go through your reads. Hit him. Hit Wilson. There we go. Break a tackle, Wilson. No. 
but I will take that. Uh, it took way too long, <laughs> admittedly, to get that to get that play going. But I saw there was a linebacker lined up on our, you know, wide receiver number two there, and I was not about to let that go by the wayside. Let's do RPO again, and yep, we'll go ahead and hit the receiver there, number four. Can he juke him, man? He does. All right, so they are moving the ball here, getting it down. That was Bobby Golden. We got this thing deep into Rutgers territory. Come on, Kellum. I believe in you. Just show me some semblance of a running game, and there's just nothing there. There is, there's nothing there. There's no push from our offensive line. There's no heart from our offensive line. I mean, there's no talent from our offensive line, so whatever. If the talent's not there, the talent's not there. But, man, oh, man, I would love to have some sort of a running game. And right now, we just don't have one. So I guess if we got to rely on the pass, we got to rely on the pass. And speaking of offensive line, they really can't block either. It's key third and 12 here, man. I see Bobby Golden getting pressed there on the outside. So he may be my first read. He's not going to be. And I I know I held the ball too long, but nobody was getting open. I Admittedly, I locked in on that press. And speaking of locking in, I got to lock in on this field goal because I really don't want to miss this. And I did. Definitely did. No shot. Okay, so wasted drive. Uh, have not really quite mastered the field goals, I'll be honest with you. And that was our chance to come back and, you know, tie this game up or at least make it a little bit more, more uh, manageable, right, by getting a field goal. We were not able to do any of that. And right now, we're not able to stop the run. So we really got a clue in on Monogonai, and it's just... Rutgers has too many athletes. We don't have any of them. And we're not getting any sort of push whatsoever. I'm going to guess pass here and probably Euster up here on Jester, the free safety. It's going to be a screen. It's going to be a screen. Jester's there, but the blocking is too good. And without a turnover or some sort of game-altering play, I just, I'm not liking the way that Rutgers is just doing whatever they want to against us, you know, driving down the, down the field at will. That's going to be another uh, little dump out to Monogonai on the flat. We need a fumble. Come on, gang tackle. That was our shot. That'll bring up second and one. I do not like this at all. We tried to blitz, and there is number six who's been carving us up all game. That's Christian Dremel, the senior. He's probably Rutgers' best receiver by far, and he and Kalika Manis has, have really been locked in and been a pretty, pretty tough tandem to deal with here. We got to get some pressures and some sacks, man, right now. Heck of a way to hold on to that one, too, by Chris Long. I mean, pressure? Can I just get some sort of pressure here at all or some sort of good play? I mean, it's good defense, but I need I need bat downs. I need sacks. I need picks. Rutgers is going to call a timeout. And remember, they get the ball after halftime as well. So if they score here and come out of halftime and double dip, I mean, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I believe in miracles, but... Not really. <laughs> I haven't really been given a reason to believe in miracles. Come on! I mean, that's good defense there by Joey Hunter, but we need the pick, man. I'm sending Lewis. I'm sending pressure up the gut. I don't care. We got to do something. We got to we gotta go against the grain here. We got to change the ebb and flow of the game, and that's what I'm talking about, baby. Big, big sack there for the Zips. We're going to go ahead and call a timeout because I really want to get this ball back, you know. And got to be careful here, though, because... I would hate for calling a timeout to come back and bite us. That much is for sure. Rutgers may even be content just to go to go running game. Uh, nope, they are going to pass it. And that is a pick. There we go. Just the play that we needed. Okay, thank you so much, Devontae Golden Nelson. That was just the play that we needed to potentially get back into this one. And we have got to find a way to go down here and score some freaking points, man. I need some protection. That's all I need is some protection. We have Adams. That's a bad throw, and it's picked right back. And we have got to find a way to go down here and score some freaking points, man. Bruh. My God, dude. It's picked right back. All right. Well, if nothing else, we get a chance to maybe score again before halftime. That was picked right back. I was looking for Alex Adams, and again, I guess that was me because I was trying to touch past it, and I think I probably bullet passed it. So I don't know what to say about that other than it was a pick six. 
and there's been a couple chances now where we had an opportunity to put points on the board, and because of, you could say it's because of me, because of the team, whatever you want to say, we haven't been able to do it. And what do we really do here? Start a screen, at least, see if Williams can get something going. I mean, a block would be nice from number 54. That would be freaking grand. Ooh. If you could do that. Apparently, he doesn't want to. And oh my God, dude, this team is this team is bad. This team is very, very bad. And it's going to be like this for a lot of, you know, the first season. So can't really let that get to me too much. Again, no pressure. We're nearly sacked. Tell you what, man, we are going to hot route Adams into the streak. We're going to cancel play action and I have no time at all to throw a ball. And it's quite the problem, actually, if I'm being honest. Oh, roughing, R running into the kicker. Thank you. Thank you. We just got bailed out there huge. Not, not sure if it's going to matter. Not sure Personal if it's going to matter with nine Ruffing seconds. But we still got bailed out. And maybe we give somebody a chance, you know, for just a deep bomb or something like that. And, I mean, you never know. Stranger things have happened. We're going to give Alex Adams a chance, though, because he is getting pressed. And, of course, that safety didn't really follow him. Maybe give me a P.I. or something. No. I mean, that was a prayer. And that's going to take us into halftime. And what has been a pretty ugly first half, whether it be me, whether it be our team, the game, it's not the game. I mean, it could be the game. I don't know. We're not that far into college football 25 to know if it's the game, although I have some theories. But both teams have a turnover, and the story of this half is that Rutgers has been able to finish drives. And aside from the one, we really haven't. And I, I really think that it's our offensive line. It's making life very difficult for Ben Finley back there. So we're going to have to find a way. You can only do so much, right? You can't draw blood from a stone. So maybe we put the, the focus and the emphasis of our recruiting on getting some freaking better offensive linemen. Ooh. Not out of this thing yet, but it's not looking good. And we really got to watch the running back Monogonai there. So I'm changing some man coverage. And of course, it's not going to be. It's a nice breakup, though. That's a nice breakup. That was Joey Hunter. Another pick would be fan freaking tastic. Don't think we're gonna get it, but you never know. I mean, a guy can dream and really need McCoy or someone to get home on this pressure. Oh, another, another nice breakup. And I believe that was Joey Hunter again. It's actually extremely huge if we can get this ball back. Cause if we do, we're not technically out of the game. And what is my lineman doing? I have no idea. He was acting really, really weird back there, but hey, uh, you know, doesn't matter. We were able to hopefully my controller is not messing up. That would just be wonderful. And we do force a three and out though by Rutgers. So that is something that is a start. Probably should have fair caught that thing. And we didn't, but we're still gonna get the ball nearly at midfield. Gotta find a way to get this running game going though. We literally have no oh, God cut the wrong way. Oh, you guys are seeing me rage harder than I ever have in Madden. That much is for sure. Maybe way back in Sentinels franchise uh, series one, but this is, this is tough. This is really tough and we gotta find a way. I had Max Wisner so open. I had Max Wisner so open, but we just do not have really a single guy that can block on this team. I mean, we really don't. It's, it's, it's bad, it's really bad. And now my receivers can't even hear my uh, audibles. Okay. Maybe. Okay, come on, please. And now I lob pass it when I'm trying. Oh, my God, dude. And what is go I had to switch my controller, man. It kept. Uh, yeah, we're not going for this. I had to switch my controller because for whatever reason, it was like pressing buttons by itself. I don't know what it was doing, but I know what we're doing. Akron Zips here. Whole lot of freaking nothing. That much is for sure. Maybe with a new controller, that'll help out a little bit. Uh, punt's not going to help out. But, yeah, man, it's tough. It's tough. Our team is not good. We do not have any protection. No time in the pocket for Ben Finley. And even though, you know, some players are starting to make some plays now, it's uh, it's not enough. And doesn't matter who makes plays if we don't have players that can answer and capitalize on the other team's mistakes. Just gonna show Blitz here. Uh, gotta watch Monogonai there, number five. He's probably gonna be, no, he's actually not the recipient of that one. And that is gonna be a house call. 
for Rutgers. And number 18, Nassim Bradley, the senior. This one uh, very eerily similar to the Ohio State game. Not going to give up on this running game, although maybe Faison Wilson. Yeah, he's got some space out on the edge. And Wilson still going. Okay. So Faison Wilson has looked pretty good. And the offensive lineman Dane Shore goes down. I mean, I don't think that we're even going to be able to tell that he's gone, if I'm being totally honest, because our offensive line has been freaking obsolete in this one. Let's go ahead and streak Bobby Golden. And the problem with these long developing play action plays is we never have any time. Let's just go to the flat there. It's Wilson again. And his own momentum carried him out of bounds. Double curls on the outside. Adams or Wilson? Somebody has to get open, please. We're going to try Adams. Alex Adams catches it. Great job on the curl route, and he's actually able to pick up a few extra for his efforts. Um, now, I feel like all we're doing is running the ball, but nothing else has worked. I mean, passing the ball, excuse me, uh, but nothing else has worked. So what do you what do you really do in this situation? We're going to try to get Kellum involved, please. And, I mean, there's just lime in there right from freaking jump. I mean, if we score here, we probably still lose, but... It's not mathematically over, so I really want to uh, try to do that. Alex Adams, don't know why he stopped on that route, man. It looked like he stopped on it anyways. And this may seem crazy, but it's four down territory. I mean, there's you know there's no chance that we we punt the ball back to Rutgers in this one. So maybe a screen pass just to get some of this back is the move. And can I please get a blocker this time? Thank you. Marquez Williams actually going to juke a man and pick up a first down. That one was actually pretty good. And this seems like a great opportunity now for a little RPO action. I mean, if I see Norton get open there, we're definitely going his way. Yep. And a good block there set by Adams. Norton may score. Juke. All right. I mean, look, we're some things to at least take away. You know, last week against Ohio State, we scored seven points. If we can, by God's green, by God's miracle, I don't know. Okay. What I'm trying to say here, if we can punch this in with Hester, and that's just going to be no chance there, man. Yep, that one was pretty bad. Someone has to get open on these slants, please. It's got to be either Adams or Williams. We're going to try Williams. Catch that. Yes, diving catch. Thank you so much. Okay, so I mean, you know, still not great. <laughs> still not great. But if anything... Score extra point, extra touchdown than we did last week, and gotta make sure I don't miss this extra point. That one should be good, right up the middle. And I mean, game is just probably over, right? But it's not. It's not over yet. It's definitely not over yet. And if we can get a stop or a turnover, I mean, we still got ourselves a fighting chance, albeit probably a thin one. A fumble would be great there. Not going to happen, though. We're looking for fumbles. We're looking for picks. We're looking for anything that can possibly get us this football back on a turnover. So that is kind of what I'm playing for right now. See if they go back to the running game. They will not. Nice catch there. And that is the first step. Let's audible into a uh, man here and kind of use her up on the defensive lineman Cooper. See where he's going to go with this ball. Oh, come on. There's there's so many bodies back there. Why can a single freaking zip not wrap him up? There's like six bodies back there. And we just don't have speed. We're just not fast. That's got to be what it boils down to. Ben Finley playing okay, though. He's, I mean, I'm not really out dueling Kalika Manis, but he's kind of going step for step with them. But unfortunately, Rutgers is moving the ball with ease on this one. Lewis, you're our best corner. I need you to play man coverage, brother. And just please play good. Don't know what that was. Okay. And that's kind of what I was saying. I'm trying to get better at, uh, you know, changing the user coverage of some of these players. Like, I got to be cognizant that Lewis is, you know, our best corner. So he should be playing some man coverage on some of these Rutgers guys here. Please get a body in the middle. That is all I'm asking. No chance it's not a run, right? I say that and it probably will be, uh, will not be, but it's, it's got to be a run. Man coverage, come on. Just please, somebody make a play. Of course, it's not a run. Someone get there for the tackle. There's there's nobody there. There's nobody there. It's Dremel again. First down, Rutgers. Got to go pressure, right? I mean, pressure with the press. That seems like the best idea. And okay, we're there. 
That's a good one. And Brian Felter of the Scarlet Knights is going to be injured. So that will be a little clock stoppage action. But that was the first time we've really, really seen some, some pressure in the backfield. And I definitely like it. We're going to go man coverage on circle here. Got to watch the screen. It is not going to be a screen. But we are there to make the stop. Field goal really wouldn't be the worst thing in the world here. And this is college football. So, you know, kickers, kickers do tend to miss kicks at times. So holding them to a field goal, I mean, like I said, it's probably still over. But not necessarily nice defense there. Wow. Okay. So let's see if and do not run. I'm not even going to attempt this block, man. I've seen so many running into the kicker calls in this game since I started playing it. Not even going to risk this. And that one is going to be good just barely. Time is now. If we plan on making any sort of comeback here, I'm kind of looking at Wisner on the out route, although I don't like it. But we have Golden open there and heck of a catch. All right, so I'm definitely feeling a lot better about this game. And, you know, that makes me confident that if we start playing some of these lesser schools like Rutgers, I mean, you know, they're not great, but they're still 80, what, 81 rated overall. Let me see blitz from that linebacker, please. I am actually begging you. It's not there. So we'll just go underneath here to Williams. He stopped, but we do get the ball just into Rutgers territory. Should be a quick step drop to Alex Adams, man. Do not get picked, please. Throw it in there. Bang. Adams having a great game. Adams having the definitely a better game than he had against Ohio State. And if we score here and make it 21-31, I will feel good about this game. Even though it's a loss, I will still feel good about this game. Haven't done it yet. Still got to do it. And there's that pressure or lack thereof that I was talking about just really really making life tough for ben finley and there's there's not a whole lot we can really do uh i mean pressure coming off the edge now i see alex adams getting pressed and if i see that safety come down even the slightest which he did kind of come on adams this is you this is you baby bang alex adams in for the score all right go ahead and shoot that bow and arrow into the crowd man i mean gonna lose this game probably uh i mean Maybe not, but Alex Adams has come up so clutch in this one. And if nothing else, this has given me a lot of confidence and a lot of things to build on going into next week. I mean, if we get a turnover here or something, you know, game is not over. We got to do it, though. That's the thing. We definitely got to do it. And we got to stop this man here. A fumble would be great. Maybe I should just go ahead and switch the uh, tackling to, where, where is that? Tackling, yeah, strip ball. Got to be aggressive on the strip ball, man. I hate to do it because that could result in a big play and it could make this scoreboard look, you know, less respectable than what it already is. But there's not not much else that we can really do. See, press coverage there on the outside was six and oh, broken tackles again. That's what it, that's why that's what happens. That's what happens when you switch the strip ball to aggressive. It's going to be tough. We're going to send send the blitz at him here. Uh, Use up on David, our safety, and hopefully maybe get some sort of play. That's going to be a wrap-up, but we'll call our timeout. I don't think it's going to matter, but uh, the hard-fought game from the Zips, I would say. Neil formation, Rutgers, we had him in a third down, and they were able to pick it up. But look, 31-21, hey progress not perfection i do like how the clock does tick down like that but progress not perfection Rutgers is a it's a pretty good school you know and we are not so we scored seven last week against ohio state scored 21 this week against Rutgers, and really there was a player of the game kyle monogana he played great 15 for 126 two touchdowns but there was a couple plays that if we would have finished the drive that interception that missed field goal Maybe we're talking about a closer game. Maybe we're talking about a Zips win. So maybe we're only a couple weeks away from finally getting into that W column. Not sure it's going to be tough, but this one, I do feel a lot more confident about it. Yeah, I mean, Ben Finley, 21 for 32, 310, three touchdowns and only one pick. He played great, but this is what lost us the game. I mean, we had neg negative rushing yards. Wow. <laughs> ben Finley, negative 20. Marquise Williams, negative one. Charles Kellum, negative one. Blake Hester, negative five. Like, we were never, that's not, we have to figure that out. There's not much to figure out if it's lack of talent, but we got to do something there. Faison Wilson went five for 63. Marquise Williams, he was kind of a factor in 
the passing game, but Alex Adams, game of the season. I know only two of games have been played, but four for 108 and two touchdowns. That was great to see. And then defensively, we had David Jester. He was all over the field. He led us in tackles. Paul Lewis, the third, he had two TFLs. Darian Lewis, our star corner, he had one as well. And then Lewis also had that sack. And then a big, big interception by Devontae Golden Nelson. So again, like I said, not the best game. We took the L, but some things to be at least semi-happy about. Dudley Saxon gets to level three. That's nice. We'll see if we got, so we got 10 coach points too. So we'll go ahead and upgrade the skills. Um, I would really, let's, let's look at offensive coordinator. I mean, I know I realize we're the head coach. Uh, XP bonus for wins versus ranked opponents. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Puts players in position to succeed on gameplay. We cannot do anything there, or can we? We can get boost throw on the run and change of direction. Boost to pass block and run block, but we can't purchase it yet. Is that right? No, we can't. Or maybe because we're... Maybe because... Oh, no, we can do some of these i don't know i'm confused man maybe it's because we're the head coach we can only focus on the head coach stuff i'm not 100 percent sure i would like to actually get some of these things Ooh, can i can i buy some of those culture setter who is strong and player gain xp whenever a player levels up we could purchase that tactician extra xp for each win i'm gonna go ahead and purchase tactician you can hybrid it out a little bit because this will allow us to get those extra boosts on game day, which we're going to need at some point. Tyreek Benedict, though, the tight end has reached his top five schools, and we are number one in the race. He's that hidden gem I was talking about, so he's going to be somebody that we're going to be looking to stay aggressive on. Brian Redman, the wide receiver, we're number one on his top five as well, so we can probably start scheduling some visits for some of these guys. Tavita Skura, he's reached his top five, and then Wayne Bullitt, who we just... We just offered him a scholarship, and it looks like just doing that jumped us ahead of Kentucky and also Northwestern. So maybe he's somebody that we can start, you know, putting some putting some focus on, putting some some scouting into. And this is a big game. Next week we take on FCS East. They have not played yet, and we also have uh, the five star, or I'm sorry, the four star prospect, the quarterback. Get a look at him really fast. He's coming to attend a practice. Akeem Bullocks. So Tennessee, he's jumped out. They've jumped out way ahead in the race for him. He's coming to attend a practice and not sure if a win against SCS would do anything, you know, to propel that any further. But since Akeem's going to be in the building, damn it, we want to pull off a win for him. But hey, that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.